I'm here to talk about Lars von Tier and his style of editing. Holy shit, that scared me. Uh, yeah, Antichrist. First off, let's look at Lars von Tier. I wanted to be a Jew, and I, and then I found out that I was really a Nazi. What? I, I understand Hitler. And I sympathize with him a little bit, yes. Not a yep, Lars von Tier is not a normal person. So let's talk about continuity. Arranging shots in a film to create the impression that time is uninterrupted and its space is continuous. I'll let this guy tell you about I it. I have two characters in the scene together. There's an imaginary line between them that divides. So basically, the these are the imaginary lines that classic Hollywood editing teaches you that you need to follow now, in film to this school. Rule, as long as I take all my shots from one side of the line or the other, the characters should always appear to be looking at each other. You can see I placed the And camera this on the is what you're not line. supposed to do. It's what we call crossing the line. And it does lead to some confusing spatial relationships. So remember, keep your camera on one side of that imaginary line or the other, and you'll never go wrong. And this is what Lars von Trier thinks. Fuck that. Here's an example from Antichrist. Could you have to meddle? This place leads nowhere. On the contrary. Oh shit, he is on the complete opposite side of the line. As you can see, Lars von Tier does not follow normal rules, and he makes it work. It seems seamless, and I'm sure if I didn't point it out, you probably might not even have caught it. In principle, I agree, but... So here, let's take a, another look at this clip and see if you can catch it. And there's a cut there. And there. And, oh, he's just showed up with a blanket. As you can see, Lars von Trier takes a different approach to editing. And he doesn't follow the normal rules and standards that Hollywood classical editing teaches you. Now here's another example that classic Hollywood editing teaches you. The match on action. As you see from the definition, it's all about making it seamless and fluid and not bringing attention to the cuts. Here's what Lars von Trier does. And here is another example from Melancholia. And as you see, the jumps cut and it doesn't really follow the normal typical action. She's bending down and then she's back up. Now the last thing I want to leave you with is Lars von Trier's transitions. As you see, it's kind of abnormal. He just goes into this plant, and from when he gets here, you'll see that it goes to... Something like this. Kind of different. Let's look at another example. Here's another transition. Uh... Holy shit. Yeah, Lars von Trier is not normal, and if you didn't break rules, I don't think that you would think of doing cool transitions and different things as Lars von Trier does, by example, with this. I'm gonna fuck you back to the Stone Age. Whoa, Lars. This is Andrew Rodriguez, and I'm going to leave you with this last transition, and this was about Lars von Trier's unique editing style, and not adhering to the Hollywood classical editing, where basically the purpose is to stay fluid and seamless and not bring attention to your cuts. This is from Lars von Trier's first feature film, Element of a Crime, and as you can see, just another outstanding transition and a different style that Lars von Trier takes. Thank you for watching.